So in the last video we left off having retrieved messages from the database that were sent to us by the user with the ID of 7 and messages that we sent to the user with the ID of 7. Doing that allows us to create this sort of chain effect that we have on our design here and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to implement that. So to implement that what we have to do is first export our design. So in Bootstrap Studio I'm just going to export this. So now we've exported that what we want to do is just paste in our new messages page and we want to replace our assets folder. So we just want to replace this we want to merge these two folders and now we've exported our design. And here is where we're loading our messages in with. You can see there's a message and then there's a spacer and then there's another message. So there's the message here and the way we get it onto the left hand side of the screen is we have an identical message on the left hand side and we just call this one on the left hand side the message spacer. So we want to run an AJAX request whenever we load this page. So on our profile page we're already calling an AJAX request when the document.ready function runs. So we're just going to copy this and use this as our template. And down here below all of our JavaScript we're just going to create some script tags and we're going to paste our function in here. Obviously we want to close that function off like this and we want to put in an error code. So whenever we get an error we want to run a function and this function is just going to log the error. So we want to call API forward slash messages and we want to pass the sender variable in. The sender variable is going to be equal to just a global variable we're going to create called sender and sender is going to be equal to 7 initially because 7 is our test number. So whenever we get our response from the API what we want to do is convert it into JSON. So we're just going to say r is equal to json.parse and we just want to pass r itself. So if I just log that and before I log that we have to go to our API and we want to just just scroll down you can see here we were echoing out some pre-tags we're just going to save that and remove those pre-tags now if I refresh you can see we get four objects returned because in this case we have four messages so what we want to do now is find out the username of the person who's logged in so what we want to do is go to the API and we want to actually create a new function we just want to use our login token and what we want to do is use our login token to get the username so we're going to go to the users endpoint and what we're going to do is we're just going to paste this in and we're going to rename receiver to user underscore id so to get the username all we have to do is just say username equals and we'll just copy this query and we'll say select username from users where id equals uid and we'll just pass in uid equals user underscore id there we're going to have now we're going to have the username in this variable and we're just going to echo it out so we're going to echo username and we just made a mistake this is an array and we only want to access the first index and then we want to access the username that's returned from that array. So now you can see our username is being printed out. Depending on whoever's logged in, we're going to get a different username. And back in our messages page, what we want to do is go back down here and we want to run another request just to download the username. So we're just going to say get username. And then up here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called get username. It's going to send an AJAX request and all it's going to do is retrieve the username for us. So I'm just going to copy this template and we're just going to call API slash users and on success we're just going to set username equals r and we'll create the global variable username up here. So now we have the username and what we want to do is we want to compare the receiver and the sender to the username. So to do that we want to loop through all of our results. And we want to say if the current result which is ri dot receiver equals username then we know that we were the receiver of the message otherwise we know we were the sender so if we were the receiver what we want to do is we want to print out the red bubble and if we were the receiver we want to copy these first two divs we also want to give this list group an id just so that we can access it we'll just give it an id of m and we'll scroll down and we'll say m dot append to append on these divs and we'll just paste in this string and i'll just put it on one line to get rid of those errors and of course we want to change the message and the message is going to be ri.body and that's how we retrieve the message. So we're just going to copy this, we've put it in our spacer and what we want to do is just also put it into the red speech bubble and when we create our global variable you just want to set it equal to nothing initially and instead of running a get username function what we'll actually do is we'll just copy this ajax request because if we run it inside a function what we're going to do is we're going to send off the request but we're not going to wait for the response before we run the rest of our code so we're just going to put this rest of our code in the response like this. Move this code up, we're just going to rename this. So we'll just call it U, we'll call this U. And we actually want to use jQuery's selector just to set m.append. Now if we refresh, you can see we got our new messages. So we're just going to copy that, paste this in here, and change the class from message from me to message from other. We're going to delete these CSS styles, and we're going to scroll up, and we're going to delete all of the divs in this list, because at the moment they're just taking up space, and we don't need them because we're replacing them with our actual dynamic content. And we actually have these mixed up. What we want to do is we want to say if the receiver equals our username, that means we didn't send the message. So we don't want to display the red messages. So we just want to invert this because we could just say if r dot 
sender equals username or and keep it like that and now if we refresh you can see it looks like we received three messages and we sent one and if we look at it you can see the sender was three times it was francis mac to me and the receiver was once francis so that's how we get the bubbles to display properly in the next video we're going to be learning how to send messages and how to get this left side navigation to work but that's it for this video don't forget to like comment favor and subscribe if you have any questions don't forget to email me at francis at .org. don't forget to like comment favor and subscribe don't forget to follow us on facebook twitter and reddit but that's it for this video and i'll see you next time